Are you ready for another journey with me? Uh, South African trip. Um, where was I? Did Swaziland? We did Swaziland and then there was Lucia, St. Lucia. And then this is <clears throat> where the day we end up in Durban at the end of the day. Um, it's a pretty relaxed morning. Got up, packed, you know, done the usual things. Um, <laughs> once we'd all packed up, you know, <laughs> and waiting, that was when we all seemed to try to take advantage of the free Wi-Fi, or the only Wi-Fi that was available in the um, in the reception area. Had room for a lot of chair, but you, every time, as soon as somebody else walked in and started using the Wi-Fi, <laughs> the internet slowed down. And then as soon as you'd see someone get so frustrated with it, <laughs> and they'd go outside and disconnect, they would... Um, the internet would speed up again <laughs> um, with the fact that I was trying to upload onto the web page um, photos and that uh, every time somebody left it was like a quiet little yippee and then as soon as it's like somebody came in it was like oh no please don't please don't use the internet no. so yeah um, but we left there went to the where did we go? Mangrove. We went to ooh, mangrove swamps is where we went to. And we got on a little boat that goes onto the river. A very shallow boat that goes onto the river. Um, and headed up to it headed up the river to spot whatever creatures we caught on the river. It was very windy so we actually did see a couple of crocodiles in the very far distance and quite a few hippos we also saw kingfisher bird and i can remember the kingfisher bird because the woman said if there's so we had a female uh, woman doing the um being our guide and she turns around and she said, if you've seen a picture of a kingfisher in this area, it will be this bird. Apparently this one bird in the area um, seems to get photographed everywhere. And it's the only one in the area or something or other. But for the size of it, it's so big that, um, yeah. We also saw a couple of little tiny monkeys. And I don't know what type of monkeys. I can't remember what type. They were um, the. I do have a little bit of footage of them, uh, but I don't think it was very good footage. Uh, let's see if I just bear with me while I try and see if I got it. I think I tried to chase him. Yeah. You do that. I will put the footage in. So I'll show some footage of um, some of the hippos we saw. I did have to, you'll find, I'll probably have to mute the sound because the amount of wind. I know when I go back and watch the footage from this this morning, the wind, because we were on the river, the wind blew through absolutely everything. At the moment, I'm pulling up videos without sound so that I can actually talk about the things that we saw.
it did. So yeah, that was quite as we saw a lot of hippos uh, and still no <laughs> no hippo yawning. So that was pretty cool though, lots of birds. Um, oh, what else did we see? I'm trying to see what else what else we saw. I think we spent a fair while on the river and then it was just on the bus and then into Durban. So in Durban we got, <laughs> um, I don't know what it was called, but we went up this, where they had the, they have a um, um, stadium or sports stadium in Durban uh, and you can go right up on top of it you get in this little elevator thing that go on the outside but it goes up and around and you get off um, I will I don't know whether I've got any video footage that's a trouble with some of this stuff um, I have uh, do, do, bear with me yeah um, the, you just get in, the, you get crammed into this tiny little, we, hang on, step back a bit. You stand in line to go up, up there. You stand in line for quite a while. We were lucky with our group. Um, our group was a, you know, a decent size. So, But we were actually in the first group of people, first, first group in, first of the people in our group that managed to get up because it was just, it, you get in there and you're squeezed in like sardines. There's so many people want to go up there. But you get up there and I'm scared of heights. <laughs> so I'm hanging on for dear life to Nathan <laughs> while we're up there. Um, but the view was amazing. You could see all the way around. It was absolutely amazing to see. Um... We actually stood there and watched other parts, other people in our tour. When they came up, we were still up there and we saw them coming up. <laughs> Yeah, that you can see from the outside they're just looking like starting so you know we understood what how they felt and then we uh, hopped in and went down from there so this is actually a pretty quiet day in reality but from there we went to the botanical gardens and it was just a case of here basically we got told about the gardens and then we went and it was a case of just to go there, sit, walk around, relax. You know, it was just free time. And it was really nice to do. It was just relaxing. Sat by the water and there was all these birds um, in the water. Um, I don't know, I'll just see if I can 
Nice. Um, it's just this. I actually put in some video footage of what the birds, ducks, there was just all sorts. Of, I'll show you that in here. We just sat there and we just fed them. Didn't do much. Fed them and just took a few pictures. Then we wandered around the gardens a bit more. And we ended up inside um, inside like this small room, greenhouse type thing. But it was like an inside pond and all this fernery. So some of the diamond paintings that I've done there is the big one that I call the Durban. Uh, that was a 60 by 100. That was where that photo was taken. So I'll pop that picture up here and you can have a look at it here. But that was a, so it looks like a waterfall and it was, it was, it's a, it's just water in a pond flowing. Um, I just managed to capture it somehow in my fluke of fluke of um, shots that I took. Um, but yeah that was just yeah just, it was it was an it was a relaxing day. You know, we'd spent the morning on a boat on the river with this hellish wind blowing us around but this this was just nice nice weather. No breeze, no wind where we were. And it was just free time where it was just Nathan and I just wandering around the uh, gardens. I, <laughs> there was, <laughs> here we go, now I'm remembering more of the funny stories that happened. There was a, where Nathan and I were heading to uh, out the front to head back to the bus it was time to go and Nathan did his usual hold this while I go and now Nathan has just doesn't stop and go do you know it need to go it's I need to go you need to hold this so whatever he's got in his hands he hands over so then if I'm actually busting to go either I have to wait with him wait for him to come back or I take everything with me well, he had just <laughs> he had just come back and grabbed everything, and I was busting to go. And one of the women on our tour just looked at me and put the cups put her cup straight at me and went, "Hold this!" And it's like I was absolutely shocked because she just not even asked. It was just handed it, tried to hand it at me, <laughs> and I've just looked at it and said, "I can't." And she was very disgusted in me. She didn't realise the fact that I was actually heading to the same place she wanted to go. But I think she'd seen Nathan come back and take everything out of my head, take what he wanted. Nathan, he, she saw Nathan take, you know, take, pick up what he, what I was holding for him. So she thought I was free to hold hers, I think. I don't know. But... Um, I was on a bad books for the rest of that rest of that day. And it was just a case of having to say, look, you just 
you didn't ask if I needed to go anywhere. Yes, I was holding it for Nathan and I relieved myself of his stuff, but I still needed a bloody go the loo. <laughs> I was already busting before she came along. So, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that's a funny, funny little memory that we have of things. Um, <clears throat> after that, and we went to, oh, was it the Paxton Hotel? Um, yeah, I think it was the Paxton Hotel. And one of the things that we've gone into our room, walked into our room, which was on the ground floor, and we bas <laughs> basically walked in, I've just gone, oh no, and walked back out again. And Nathan's like, Nathan's just gone, what's wrong? And I said, they've given us single beds again. So we were straight back out, spoke to Craig and said, you've done it again. We've got single beds. So, um, you know, we, we ended up being moved, uh, thankfully, to another room um, with a decent sized bed you know, and the hotel that we were at there was I think, don't think there wasn't a restaurant you could get room service only so if you wanted dinner you had to go out and leave the restaurant and it was actually miserable the weather in the, that night it was raining it was yuck so that was yeah that was that night, that day, very, you know, you know, the hippos were really good to see. But still, um, yeah, yeah, still a good day. Where am I? Is that it? That's it. Okay, so from there, our... Next day, I uh, was in Drakensburg. We spent two nights in Drakensburg, um, which was the accommodation wasn't exactly um, stunning. Um, where we were staying was very old. Why am I, hang on. Just trying to think. We were there. Oh, I'm getting my places where we stayed mixed up. It wasn't, Dur Durban was different. Dur wasn't Durban. That, I'm trying to remember where the Paxton was. The Paxton wasn't there. See, that's how you mix up a day, isn't it? We're at Durban, just it's funny how I'm looking at the pictures and then it's like, no, that's not what we say. Durban was actually a really nice room. Paxton, we'd already stayed at a couple of nights beforehand, which is when we actually started complaining about getting single beds. Durban was actually a really big, um, really nice, nice room, um, very nice um, and the only thing that just reminded me of that was because Durban in the morning when we got up, um, we ne I needed to go into the shops. I needed to get, go to the chemist. So we've had to go to shopping centre, which is actually across the road from where we were staying. And it was pretty cool. It was a big shopping centre. So... Coming from a sleepy little Perth, it was a big shopping centre, massive. I mean, yeah, it was huge. Um, but we'd gone in and so Nathan's job at that point in time was uh, managing a, a fishing tackle store. So we've gone in and the first 
entry that we've gone into in the, this big shopping centre, which is across the road. It's coming to beat as to where the Paxton is. That's called Elizabeth, I think. Anyway, um, yeah, we've gone across this massive shopping centre. And the first thing, first place we saw as we walked in was this, um, how do I put it? It was a fishing store. So we've walked in, just basically walked in, and there's a coffee shop there, and then there's a fishing store here. And he was like, you go and have a coffee, and I'll go in and have a look at this. Um, so, yeah, he, he got his bit of fishing gear fixed while he was there. And I sat and had a coffee at... Where was what was it called? I don't know whether it was a Roy or Jeans or um Roy or Jeans or something like that. That or is it a gosh? Well, anyway, one of the one of the coffee chains that we have in Australia, and so I'm sitting there having this, trying to drink this coffee. Um, which was absolutely disgusting. Um, watching Nathan happily chat to somebody about fishing gear and fishing in the area or whatever it was he was talking about. So, um, yeah, we then went from there to Howick Falls. And that's really, <laughs> it, it's funny but not funny. So you go into How It Falls and you have a look at How It Falls, which is absolutely massive. And you've got the viewing platform that we're on. And you see down the falls, you can see it all down and down the river. But what you also see is on the other side of the falls, which is where the locals live, you've got them doing their washing. So you, we're actually watching them you know, washing their clothes in the water and all of that. You know, so there's just the big difference between, you know, having somewhere that we as tourists go to to view and awe about things is an area for, for the locals that it's just part of their daily life. And, I mean, you see that all over the world, but I think it was just something that really noticeable where we were, where there's no, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to put it. I suppose we've got it here. We've got, we, I suppose we get it here where we've got kangaroos around the place and, um, you know, we're complacent about them, yet everybody's excited, everybody that visits Australia tends to be excited about seeing a kangaroo. And we, they're just part of our life. Around here, you just hope that you're going, you're able to stop and not hit them when they jump out. You, know, you drive as safe as you can, but they still jump out. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we went Howard, How It Falls, and we were in this little town for a while, and we got to have a look around the stores don't think I brought anything there but um, we went looking for a place to have lunch there's quite a few different shops and we actually stopped at one that I found appropriately named which was Ray's Cafe Ray is the name of my dad and also the name of my stepfather so it was like okay um, but uh, something Nathan had been complaining about was, well not complaining about, one of the things that he hasn't had was a meat pie and he was hanging for a meat pie and we managed to get a meat pie from this cafe. So I don't think it's a good, it was as good as the Australian meat pie but at least he got a pie. <laughs> that shushed him for a little bit. Not long but a little bit. Okay. Oh, 
the Drakensbergs. So we get all part of the bus again and off we go. And we end up you know driving along and it's like you know you start seeing the Drakensberg and you don't like I before we went I did look and have a look at things uh, for the for the Drakensberg. Um, because we had two days there which meant we were going to have at least one day where we were free if we didn't go with one of the tours they had on offer we could you know find another tour to do or nothing at all pardon me um but we um so i was kind of trying to find stuff before we left to go and what what else we could possibly do um, we did end up with one of the tours though. And yeah, none of those. Oh. Hope I don't run out of these. That doesn't look good. It's not many there. Okay, so yeah, anyway, we um as we're approaching it's like just it's just so so big. And some of the things that I've been looking at and researching, and I said to Craig, I said, I can't, can't remember what it was called, it's so long ago, but there, there was some stuff that I'd read or seen on, seen on the internet anyway, uh, about a section of the Drakensberg, and I said, oh, where, where is, in relation to where we're going, where is that? And he went, Oh, that's hundreds of kilometres away. That's over that direction there. We will be nowhere near there. It's like, oh, okay, right, yeah. You know, and even going from where you know the the time it took to get to to Drakensberg Mount to where we were staying was ages. But you know, when you get to a certain point and there's just thunderstorms start rolling in, it's just Drakensberg has its own weather system basically which is I had read that it had its own weather system um, because of the sheer size of it okay I'm just looking for any more ants I am actually going to pull the mic just magnifying glass out it's not 100% necessarily but just do like to make sure I do have one question mark up here, which I missed. All right. So, um, with the place there, dinner was included for both both nights we were there. Um, absolutely huge, huge grounds. Um, massive grounds just so I will I will send I'll put put through a some footage of the how it falls and you can see you can kind of see um, people across on the other side of the falls um, but yeah it was absolutely amazing to see the size of it the size of the Drakensberg you know the, the small section that we saw um, the before we went to dinner now the couple that we we met up with one of the couples and we went into the bar with them and <laughs> oh, here we go this is the funny thing um, is it the World Cup or there were some massive rugby games going on in anyway, massive rugby game going on and it was actually the Springboks were playing against Samoa and, and typical Aussie style so the other the other couple we were with um, that we're in the bar with um, were also Aussies 
So in typical Aussie style, <laughs> the guys started barracking for the Samoans. <laughs> so whenever the Samoans did well, it was like, yeah, carrying on from, from our little table. Uh, and you could see them looking at us going, get out. <laughs> you know, we were very lucky that they were very patient people. <laughs> but it was like, they're going to, yeah, it was just really funny to have to say to Nathan, oh, settle down, you know, they'll kick us out. But, no, it was all good fun. It was a good laugh. Um, I suppose sometimes I take things too seriously. Okay. Um, I'm just looking at the bees and they're starting to look like R's to me, but they are, it's, it, they are bees. R has a dark print. Um, so, yeah, we went to uh, the bar, had a couple of drinks, and then we went to have our dinner. Um, it was just a... I suppose a, just a standard dinner, I suppose. There was nothing phenomenal about it. Um, we, after dinner, we went down to reception because we'd only, let's put it this way, we had single beds again, but, but just gone to the point of going, well, I'm not going to complain about it. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, but just didn't want to deal with the upheaval, especially for the, for the distance we had to travel there get to our room but um, turned around gosh that's a H isn't it yeah um, yeah we got to our room we got finished we finished dinner went to reception and asked about Wi-Fi and only to discover there was no Wi-Fi available for free if you wanted Wi-Fi, you actually had to sit in reception and you had to pay for, for the usage of it, you know, so much, so much you had to pay. So I was like, geez, that's, you know, that's the first place we've had to worry about paying for it. But then you look at where they were, I suppose it's understandable now, but I was, I was not impressed at the time. And then while still in reception, I turned around and I said, can we have some extra towels? Because, yeah, we only had two towels in our room. And I like to have a towel just for my hair. Most, I think, if you've got longer hair, a second towel is, makes a big difference, absolute big difference. But apparently, nope, we couldn't get any towels. They don't have enough to... Because of the uh, washing situation or whatever it was, they don't have enough towels for us to have one extra towel. And even the woman that was with us, you know, she could she couldn't believe that she couldn't get an extra towel. You know, it's like you know, we could only have two towels in our room. We couldn't have a third towel. And it's, it's like, well, what if we actually had a room for three people? You know, we'd be getting three towels, but. No, we couldn't get it, didn't get it. So we spent two nights at this place. Um, beautiful grounds, beautiful grounds. But it was, in a way, it was a bit run down. Oops. But still um, beautiful grounds to be on. Uh, so, yeah, we settled back for the night. I went back to our rooms. Um, I think I did turn around and Nathan went to turn around and said to Nathan, well, I'm going to take my computer up to the reception. I'll pay for some internet for a little bit just to get some stuff done. Um, keep the family updated with where we were, what we're doing, all of that. Um, and he just laid back and went to bed. I think he fell asleep watching TV. Okay. Yep. My eyes are very tired tonight. Um, 
it and the eyes are tired the magnifying glass just makes it a little bit easier to pick up okay so the next day um, was uh, we ended up in Sani Pass. Now, Sani Pass is the takes you to Lesotho, which is another country within the boundaries of South Africa, and it is. So what is it? It's just trying to work it out. I can't remember. 2,800 2, metres above sea level. So we have gone um, to do this tour for the day. That's that one. We've gone to do this tour for the day and um, you know, it was the trip was in four wheel drive vehicles all the way up to the uh, top of Sunny Pass and into Lesotho. That was quite good. Um, we've just gone in this little oh, gosh. What have I done? There we go. Um yeah, so we've gone into this um, four wheel drives that squeak like hell but they got us up there and but you'll see we saw oh, no. there was a mini bus no that's okay a, a mini bus that rushed past us at one stage and the driver's gone oh, he'll get to a certain point and he'll drop his passengers off and highly likely there'll be another group of people waiting where he's dropping them off and he'll bring them down. Um, at certain points they can, that some people will walk to, um, but unless you, it's pretty hard to get up to some points and parts of this up the semi pass unless you've got the four wheel drive. But surprising to find out how far these vehicles actually did manage to go. The standard two wheel drive vehicles did end up going.
we are going higher and higher. Oh, yeah. And cyclists coming down. And cyclists coming down here. You would have been picked out here, but you had to go shopping there. Don't be gone, Chris. Don't be gone, So we've gotten up top, we've gotten up the top and taken into a little Lesotho village and then um, it, it's a, the altitude of it gave me, I struggled up there with breathing because of the hot, such a high altitude, you know, I wasn't, my body wasn't used to it. Some of the places where Nathan's travelled, his I think he's aware of it because he was like saying to me, just t take deeper breaths because he could see me struggling and puffing and panting and he said, just take deeper breaths, slower breaths, deeper but slower breaths. And, you know, I was I was lightheaded as, lightheaded as. And um, so we've gone into this little village and tried, gone into one of the rooms and one of the huts, I shouldn't say rooms, but... Well, it's a room, but it was a hut. Um, and we were given some of their bread to try and um, some of the beer, although I didn't touch the beer. Nathan had a taste of it. Um, oh, that's good. Uh, um, yeah, had a look around up there. And, you know, there's no trees because it's so high and the, the wind just blows through there. And um, one of the things they're talking about is how cold it gets up there and that there is snow. You know. The Drakensberg Mountains, it does actually snow. And so to actually say to people that it snows in South Africa, um, you don't even imagine the fact, you know, for the images and the thoughts you get of South Africa, to think that it actually snows in a part of South Africa, it just doesn't seem quite right, but it is right around the Drakensberg Mountains and the Lesotho area. Well, Lesotho isn't South Africa, but it's it's within. Um, yeah, it does snow. It's quite cool. Things you learn that you didn't know, you, <laughs> you didn't know. Um, so after we've gone into this little village and had a look around, we were taken to this pub to have our lunch. And the pub has this pub's claim to fame is that it's the highest highest pub in Africa, not just South Africa, but it's the highest pub in Africa. So that's its claim to fame. And it's right sits right at the top, right at the top of um, Sani Pass. Um, just at the border point. Um, so that's something about so when you leave from one place to another one country to another, you get stamped in and out. Um, and it was just a case of the guide said to us, just hand us your passport so I could get him stamped. <laughs> it's quite amazing how everybody just hands their passport over and, you know, 
And the reason they did that was because, there we go, I missed one. It was just easier and quicker if he did that than if we did it. And because we were a part of a tour, we weren't hit with any fees by the sound of it come by the other people we spoke to. Oh, I think that's it for the Fs. So yeah, up Sandy Pass we went, four wheel drives. Um, I don't know whether I've got any video footage. Oh, oh, I might have some video footage of Sandy Pass. Oh, yeah, I've got some footage of Sandy Pass. I'll go through and I'll see what I can put up of our drive up there to get there, which was a bit of fun. Um, I'll actually do, I think I've got some nice video footage of just the area surrounding our accommodation where we stayed at Duckins Bird Garden. One of the other funny things that we saw was um, this pub. We stopped at a, another pub on the way down, which basically was a toilet break or what they call a comp what people call a they call comfort stop. Um, and I'm just trying to what did it say? about shoes, no bare feet, no knives, I think it was. I still can't try to remember it. No, I can't remember it. Bugger. But then, yeah, it was basically no bare feet, no knives, uh, no something else. But it was like, I know, I, I think I took a picture of it, but I'll have to find it. If I find a picture of it, I'll pop it in here somewhere. How bad is it when you she start talking in a whip and chat where you go, oh, what, what symbol was I working on? <laughs> um, but, yeah, it was just... Um, an interesting sim, um, sign we saw at this pub. Um, and so, yeah, we've gone in, gone back to where we're staying and had another very uneventful night. I didn't go anywhere near the internet because the night before, I, I think I posted something on Facebook the night before to the family to say, hey, I've no internet, no updates, this is where we are. Um, I'll update the website in the next place we can um, because obviously this website is how we kept our family up to date with what we're doing and where we were and how they knew that we were safe in, safe where we were. So that's two days worth of chatting. Um, After that, we head to Chinster East. So, um, which was the longest distance travelled was this next step. So, I'll continue on here. Um, I won't do a long whip and chat. I think two days is enough. Still, well, 45, nearly 45 minutes worth of recording. So I'll continue on to get this section done. And um, I'll upload this, and I hope you enjoyed those two days. Um, well, actually, three days, basically, <laughs> as we go along for Durban to Drakensberg and then Sandy Pass. So that was actually three days. Um, so, yeah, I will talk to you in my next South African whip and chat and um, we're getting closer to um, us going and seeing the white lion. 
so yeah, thank you for listening. Please subscribe. Just a thumbs up, thumbs down, pop a comment and um, hit the bell for any more updates to anything that I do. And bye for now.